Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 20 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. Okay, so just to confirm like what I was saying in the previous episode, he does plan on making cell phones, not walkie-talkies. What's going on right now is he's making a cell tower, because you certainly need those before cell phones. The engineering challenge here is not just to build one cell tower, but to build multiple, depending on like the, the total distance he wants to use his cell phones between. Also, cell towers don't require a whole lot of power to operate. They're like 25 watts? Which, I mean, you're probably using more than that just with your light bulbs and air conditioning every day. The relationship between power and distance that the cell tower could like reach between is P is equal to R squared, or power is equal to radius squared. Radius being the range of the cell tower. That means through your cell tower, if you're emitting four times the normal power, you'll get double the range. Or if you're emitting 25 times the normal power, you'll get five times the range. If you're emitting 100 times the normal power, you'll get 10 times the range. It's a quadratic relationship. If you were to graph it, it would be y is equal to x squared. So it's just like a U shape that intersects at the point zero, zero. One huge advantage that Senku has is there's no concern about interference between the cell towers because there's no other technology on earth. Modern day cell towers are operated by the company that owns them. So for example, like in the US we have T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, Verizon. So those companies will own the cell towers. And for you to um, use those cell, cell towers to actually make a phone call or send a text message, you need to own a Verizon phone to use a Verizon cell tower. And I mean, I'm sure you can pay for like an international phone plan and that'll give you access to multiple, but in general, these uh, cell towers are programmed such that they'll accept and reject certain frequencies. And that's how they know like which cell phone is um, using which carrier. If there's three cell towers around you and you try to make a phone call, then your cell phone will connect to the closest cell tower to you that shares the carrier which you bought the phone through. And the reason it'll choose the closest is because that requires the least amount of power so that you can have the longest communication possible. So let's say you have towers A, B, and C, and Sprint is tower C that you're communicating with. When you make a phone call, towers A and B still register that like your phone is making a call, it's just they're rejecting the frequency because you're not using those towers. And let's say that the um, police or FBI wanted to somehow find you, they use those three cell towers, which is triangulating your position. And what they would do is they would determine, okay, this person is calling and they're using cell tower C. And it's like, now where in the radius of cell tower C can this person be calling from? And let's say like you're close to cell tower C, but you're far from B which means the person making the phone call must be where cell towers A and C intersect. And that's how they will slowly like, you know, figure out where you're calling from and find out where you are. And nowadays, so many people have smartphones that your location services are pretty much always on. So you don't even need to use cell towers to triangulate someone's position. Like your cell phone is broadcasting its location all the time. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I, I've never seen that before and I'm not sure something like that would be used today. As an engineer, I'm pretty spoiled. Like, I have access to all the materials I need to, like, wire whatever it is I need to do. I don't, I, I haven't really thought about where those materials come from because I'm so focused on, like, completing my job for whatever it requires. But, like, for me, like, I, I just, I, I'm just, it kind of blows my mind thinking, like, I've never thought to wonder where do these wires come from. If, if I wanted to have really anything I all I have to do is like walk down a hall and I know which door to go to and I'll just ask someone like hey can I get uh three six volt batteries and um six op amps 
and give me like one meter of 2.5 millimeter wire and can I get some lights like really any material I want I can just ask for and I get it but I can't tell you which might be a surprise as an electrical engineer I don't know how they make that wire all I know is I just walk down the hall to that door to get it Senku is correct about the centrifugal force that is a outward force that an object experiences while it's moving along the radius of a circle and the opposite of that is centripetal force which um, the object while it's moving along the radius of a circle it's actually having an inward force so that object is being pulled to the center of the circle whereas with centrifugal force that object is being pushed away from the center of the circle an example of centripetal force is gravity like the, the earth rotating around the sun with each rotation the earth is moving closer and closer to the sun that's an example of a centripetal force the sun is exerting on the earth as well as everything else in our atmosphere sorry not atmosphere in our solar system I'll, I'll tell you what man that's that's a lot of wire that senku is asking for and I I'm also wondering, how do they have that much gold? Like, th these people must be sitting on a literal gold mine to have, like, all of that gold and they can make all the wire in the world with it. Modern wires are made out of copper because gold is really, really expensive. I don't know, okay, as I say this, I realize that in that world, there's no concept of currency. So, no one even knows how expensive gold is, it's just another resource to them. That is really, really cool. I mean, not just the fact that they actually made a saw, but dude, like they, they pretty much made a hydroelectric generator. Like, I mean, and this is all without like Senku's intuition. I don't even know how they came up with this, but that's. And to be honest, I'm not even sure that like the old man and Chrome know what they built, but this is a really big deal. What's different about this world is that electricity was discovered before gears. And well, I mean, I'm actually not sure that you would say it was discovered because Senku already knew how to do it. He didn't like come across it somehow, but I guess so electricity was introduced to this world before the concept of like the mechanical gear or the wheel was. I mean, that's what a jump. <laughs> they even had antibiotics before these people started domesticating animals. Like this is the whole thing is like mixed up in a hodgepodge, but it's really, really cool that they were able to like create all these technologies in like mixed order because this makes the show way more interesting. <laughs> That is awesome, man. The people in this village don't even understand what they've built, but Senku is fully aware of the huge technological jump that they've just achieved. Because they, they can power a lot of things right now, and they don't need people to do it, and it's going to be more consistent, and it's going to be a higher output. Like, oh my gosh, like... I mean, Senku's probably losing his mind right now, but these people are just like, you built a really cool machine, but like, no, you've, you have changed the earth forever. To break down hydroelectric, the, the first part of that is hydro, which means water. And you could <laughs> think about hydro pump. We, we all know what that is. And then the second part of that is electric. So hydroelectric is suggesting that the flow of water is what's producing the electricity. I've never seen it worded quite as perfectly as it did in this show. You have an infinite, like, I mean, it's not infinite energy, but you have like a, an, an infinite parallel movement, which is the flowing of the water. Like, nothing is preventing that from flowing ever, right? And within that time, you can use that infinite rotation to build this. Like, it, very, very well worded. I'm more excited than ever to see how they build these cell phones now because they just built a power plant and the, I mean they can use this for so many things like I, I really want to know how they do this but like <laughs> I'm almost like I want to see how they build the cell phones but I'm almost more interested to know like how he utilizes this one power plant to like pretty much power the whole village.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found some value in the video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more Dr. Stone, then go ahead and put that in the comments as well. If there's any other movie or TV shows you want me to commentate over, go ahead and put that in the comments as well. I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.